So today we're going to be looking at replacing a shade in a window. We're going to be replacing a select blind. This is a top down, bottom up. Uh, we purchased these back in 2007. The, these were more expensive shade, and it was, what was kind of cool about it is that they had a double row of, of cells here. These are the cellular blinds, uh, 3 8 inch I think is what they were, but these were a room darkening. And in this particular, sh with this particular shade, we had three of them in this room with three windows. You could almost make this so it was like nighttime during the day with these blinds. They were definitely more expensive, and we purchased these in 2007 with a lifetime warranty, uh, thinking that you know you spend extra money, they'll be around for a while. Well, here we are 10 years later, and over the 10 years, we've got one, I think, maybe two, in all of the ones we purchased in 2007 and 2008 that are still existing. The rest have died. Lifetime warranty for some companies means as soon as the the uh, products, once they're done, they discontinue them, your warranty goes away. And that's what we have here. So we're going to replace that. The way we start off with that is there's three holders on this one. And what these, these little holders do to hold this, this bar up, this rail up, is that they're kind of, kind of on a spring loaded. So we have to push them back and then tip them out to get them out of the window. So push back and then tip out. There's one. Push back, tip out. There's two. Push back. Three. This particular blind came with strings, uh, one on each side. One was controlling the bottom, one was controlling the top. There should be two strings on each side to allow the functioning of this blind. And of course, they break. And the warranty doesn't kind of go for a lifetime on that one. So we're going to be replacing that with a blind from Menards. This is a window image brand blind. It is a top down, bottom up. One of the things with this is it's about a third the price of the blind we're replacing. The negative is that it is a light, it, it kind of dampens the light down, but it's not a room darkening. So unfortunately, that's going to be a problem when it comes summer months when you have daylight coming up, daylight at 4 or 5 a.m. here in northern climates. But for this application, I wasn't going to go spend that amount of money on a lifetime warranty blind and throw that money away. So I wanted a top down, bottom up. So that way in the summertime, we can keep the blind at the bottom. This is a southern facing window. And I want it so that we can pull the blind down, open up the window to get some fresh air in or to get the daylight in and not have the problem with the bottom being lifted up where you're going to have the sunlight beating into the room during the day. We have an overhang here just outside the window, so that will, in the summertime, you won't really have light coming in on the top half of the window, only the bottom half of the window. But we get into August when the sun starts to come down a little lower in the sky. On these very hot August days, you will have sun hitting about two thirds of this window, hence why the top down, so we can have this for light and blocking the, light, the, the sunlight the rest of the way, is so important. So there's a few things we need to do with this, is we have to put end caps on, because this was actually a custom cut at the, at the shop. And what they did is they nip off on both ends of the blind. So we've got some caps we need to put on, some little spacers we have to get removed and such, and get it ready to go. But I'm going to take these out. One of the things you need to do is we're going to be retrofitting, and these brackets have to come out. There's no question about it. But I want to check and see if they, the spaces, maybe I can reuse the holes. So if you take a look up here, this bracket, a new bracket in this area is going to miss everything. A new bracket in this area, well, this is just instruction, so it's going to miss everything. And over on this side, the bracket's going to miss everything. So those spots where those three brackets exist right now are going to be spots that I can put the new brackets on and make the installation just a lot easier. If this would be a brand new installation, what I'd probably do is I'd actually come out about another half inch so that the blind is going to be more centered in this, in this extension jam area. That way it's not going to be up against the window or touching the window during the winter months when we have the blinds down and we will actually get condensation on these windows and you get frost and ice buildup. If the blinds are a little, bit, a little ways away from that window, at least the moisture is not going to get on the blind and we can open the blinds on the top and bottom, get some air moving and, and dry things up. So first thing we're going to do now is get a drill and remove those three brackets. So now the, the kit comes with a little box that has some of the hardware. You've got the hanging brackets. Now the hanging bracket is the, a little bit of an L shape and what it is is the top is kind of this little hook on the very top and the bottom has a little clip and we'll be mounting the bracket up in at this, this uh, methodology and I've got to make sure that the holes are going to line up with the existing holes. We also have little plastic clips that go on the end. Now that was a cut in the store shade, which means that the ends are raw cut plastic. So we need to put these little ends, so there's two, four, 
the top and bottom rail, and then the very top where all the, the gizmos and such, there is the cover for that. There are little plastic handles that are in there, so you can put one in the top rail and one on the bottom, or two, there's actually four of these, two on top, two on the bottom, and good to go. And then there's some screws and a few other miscellaneous things that are in the box here. But the first thing we need to do is find out if those holes are going to line up with what we had. So we'll take our bracket and get in here and see. And it looks like the holes will indeed line up for us, which is going to be great. That means that we can get our tools and get ready to go with only having to drill one pilot hole. We're going to utilize the existing hole that we made. The, the other bracket had two holes. It had a front and a back, and the second hole was actually into the, the uh, plastic housing, and we don't want to do that again. So we're going to do a side-by-side -side with this particular one. We're using the one that is in the wood already. Now we're going to put our screw in to get one side of the bracket attached. Get close. Now if I were doing this in a new installation, I wouldn't, first off, be obviously having holes like this. And I would be marking these, putting them up there, getting them all squared off, and marking them, and then drilling those before we did the installation of the brackets. In this particular case, I don't want to go and try to mark it with one hole already made and find out that the hole isn't in the right spot. So what we're going to do is secure it, square it off with the one screw already in it, and then we'll come back and drill the pilot for the second hole. Now get these brackets facing forward properly so they, they look good. Next we're going to be doing a pilot hole to, on that second hole. Now this is the size of, of the screw that we're going to be using. And going into our kit here, we're going to be looking and we want to, we don't want to have a drill bit that is too close to the same size. This is kind of a harder wood that we're getting into. So we're going to go with one that's a little bit smaller, that's a, a, trying to get something that's about the diameter of the inner shank of this screw without the threads. So the threads will basically bite into the edge of the wood. Now I'm looking at it, that would be somewhere between a 7 64ths and 3 30 seconds. I'm going to go with a little bit smaller one with a 3 30 seconds and use that as my, my drill for the pilot hole because that should, if you take a look at that, you can see that the drill, the threads of the drill go out and beyond that. I'm going to use this just to get into the wood a little bit and then let the screw go through the hardwood and then it will go up into the piece of wood that's right above that in this construction. Now we'll put the second screw in each bracket and then we're just about ready to hang our, our shade. Now this was cut at the store, so that means that the ends are both, we'll call them, we'll call them raw ends, and I need to put these little clips on them. Now I'm going to slide that over just a little bit. I want to have a little bit, I want to have a little bit of, of a space here, but not too much, because there's a little metal strip that's inside that. And I need to have this little clip, there's a little clip right here, and it will catch on that metal strip. Now you'll see that this has a little bit of a bump on one side. That bump goes down towards the bottom. So I can line this up and it snaps right on. And then I can pull all of the shade up above it and slide it right in. We'll get our top one. Again, the bump is on top with this one.
And then our very top one has a rounded spot and then a flat. Make sure you get the right one. And you just snap that right in. Oh, this has got a bad, this has got a bad burr here. This one might be to snap in. And then we need to do the same on the other side. Rounded spot towards the front. Catch everything. Snap it into spot. Then we'll get our top one in. I don't think this shape cut as cleanly as the other one did. There we go. And another bottom one. There. Now, now I left the, sh the shade on the plastic just to kind of keep it together a little bit better while still is maneuvering things around. The way this goes up now, we have our brackets up. It has the hook in the front and the clip in the bottom. So basically what we're going to do is a very simple, we clip the top, we snap it in the bottom, and there is our shade. Now they've got the little plastic clips we talked about these clips before is that there's there's four of them but in this particular case I'm going to this is with a teenager's room I'm just going to put one on the top and one on the bottom you could put two and two so they could grab with two hands but my concern is that with a teenager in this room what what they'll do is they'll just grab with one hand anyway and putting all that pressure on one side of the shade instead of a central location it would be all the pressure on one side of the shade so we're going to just put one on each side so that way it can be grabbed by the center and can go up and down. Now you can see that this isn't a, a blackout shade. A blackout shade would be one like what we replaced before which really literally looked kind of like this area where it was very very dense and this would be this is what the old blackout shade looked like this would be kind of a, a light a light cutting more of a privacy privacy shade which works for most of the times of the year except when the sun's coming up in the spring so early. Anyway, that was replacing of a shade. This is replaced with a window images shade from Menards. Very simple to do. If I were going to again install this on new construction, I'd probably bring it out another inch. So it would stand, be a little closer to the edge, keeping it just a little bit more away from that window. Otherwise, pretty simple to do. Uh, you need to drill, a screwdriver, and off you go. This is John Young with The Weekend Handyman.